So it just so happens that in the house that I grew up in as a child, um, we had a lily of the valley as a ground cover in our backyard. So some of my earliest scent memories involve the magical fragrance of this flower. Uh, in this video, I'm going to discuss lily of the valley, or muguet as it's said in French, and its presence in perfumery. Um, I'm also going to share five fragrances in my collection that feature this note. So to start off with, Lily of the Valley is a bulbous plant. So it grows from a bulb, much like Narcissus or Tulip. And it belongs in the uh, Asparagaceae family. And it's distantly related to the very asparagus that we eat. Its Latin name is Cavallaria Majalis. And that literally means May Lily in Latin. And uh, white is the most popular color for the flowering plant, but there are other color uh, varieties um, like pink and purple. Um, Lily of the Valley can live for decades in cool climates, but it doesn't survive very long in hot weather. Um, that's why you see it thriving in more temperate regions. The flowering blooms of this plant are actually very toxic. In fact, if ingested, they can cause red rashes, blurred vision, reduced heart rate, drowsiness, vomiting, severe pain. So look, smell, maybe even touch if you're careful, but do not eat. According to Roman and Greek mythology, this flowering species is linked to Apollo, uh, the Greek god of the sun, and some believed he made the lily of the valley flower as a ground cover um, meant to be suitable as a walking space for his nymphs when passing the Mont Parnasse. And legend has it that Lily of the Valley sprang from Eve's tears when she was exiled from the Garden of Eden. For Serbian traditions, the Lily of the Valley flower became a holiday flower. It is attributed to St. George's Day. And on this day, the flower was picked and used to decorate homes. Uh, they were also used to decorate each other. The flowering plant is viewed as a sign of prosperity and fertility. It happened to become Finland's national flower in 1967 and was the floral emblem of Yugoslavia. France also celebrates something that's called Le Fête du Muguet, Le Livre de Valley Day, on the 1st of May. This French tradition of offering nosegays of these nodding white flowers on the 1st of May um, you would give them to somebody you love and admire. Uh, the tradition goes back centuries to Charles IX, who inaugurated it in the year 1561. And since then, Lily of the Valley has also made its way into countless bridal bouquets, including that of Kate Middleton for her wedding uh, to um, Prince William. And in many countries, it's linked to this day with tenderness, love, faith, happiness, purity. There's even a song by Queen devoted to the flower on their 1974 album, Sheer Heart Attack. The flower itself has a scent profile that's almost spicy, very green and a bit sweet with these jasmine nuances, just a bit indolic, and these even these hints of citrus and lemon. It's hard to imagine a more vernal scent. And as well as featuring widely in solar floors, um, the so-called single note fragrances that were popular um, in the late uh, 19th century and early 20th century, um, Lily of the Valley is known to work its magic and many other fragrances. And it's used to sort of blend and open up and freshen the other floral notes in a blend. Um, there's a clever writer online. Um, I found a quote from the Perfume Shrine blog, and uh, he puts it as much like we allow fresh air to come into contact with a red wine to let it breathe and bring out its best, such as the purpose of Lily of the Valley in a perfume. These early uh, Lily of the Valley solo floors in the turn of the 20th century used primarily hydroxy citronella, but by the mid century, with advances in scent chemistry, we would start to see the usage of lilio and lyral. 
And these two, unfortunately, are now banned um, with concerns of uh, fertility being affected and skin irritant potential, among other things. But there have been so many subsequent advances, especially in the 21st century, um, everything ranging from lily floor to miguesia, hivernal nail, cyclosia base, muge aldehyde, mugetinol, male, majif lismerol, which is also branded as lilistralis, magentil, mellifleur, elental. There's plenty of lily of the valley um, aroma chems and bases that can be used today um, that are free from the same kind of restrictions and concerns. So without further ado, I'll get started with talking about the five uh, Lily of the Valley centered fragrances that are in my collection, beginning with Muguet Porcelain. So this was released in 2016. And um, here in Massachusetts, uh, it, it, it May is approaching as of this video. And the Lily of the Valley are about to bloom here. And their white frilled bells emit one of the most beloved perfumes to come from nature. I have a strong connection with them, um, as I said earlier, and uh, they were my mother's favorite flower. Uh, they're steeped in much symbolism as well, and there's a purity to its complex fragrance as well, uh, feeling crisp, watery, lush, yet ethereal. And Lily of the Valley is what they call a mute flower. It's one that smells in situ, but cannot produce any aromatic materials. There are no essential oils, no means of extracting through a solvent. So with these flowers being mute, um, what you would need to do is construct them, the, the scent profile using a composite of synthetics and naturals to sort of approximate its scent as closely as possible. Um, with Muguet Porcelain, Jean-Claude Elena brings into relief the sensation of experiencing the flowers up close and personal. Um, in the face of restrictions to the Muguet materials such as Lily and Lyral, he manages to really bring to life the spirit of this flower uh, perhaps by incorporating some newer materials or purely by his stroke of genius. Uh, those who detect musk melon or cucumber notes may or may not be familiar uh, to the scent of fresh lily of the valley, as its aqueous quality does indeed have these facets to it, especially when freshly picked. Also, those who are not well acquainted with the flowers, um, who are well acquainted, rather, um, they know that, that that fresh, crisp quality has that short, it has a short lifespan, and even when in water, um, it quickly dissipates. So we find that it involves, uh, evolves into this tender decay as the blooms wilt and discolor. So it may seem linear, but Muguet porcelain um, actually follows sort of this timeline of withering and receding. The note of peer is the first suggestion of this, only minutes in. Um, just slightly sweet, but hinting at ripeness. It is, however, in the dry down that I experience sort of a civet-like note that enhances the ripening, withering quality beautifully, uh, which is remarkable given the sheer quality of the composition overall. Therein lies the truth of the flower and a testament of its inevitable terminus, ready to return to the earth that is animal, vegetable, and mineral. This one is for true lovers of the real life flower rather than just an abstract lily of the valley perfume accord. And I consider this definitely 100% unisex. Next, I have this little itty bitty baby here. Uh, this is a 90s version of Diorissimo, originally released in 1956. The verdant exuberance of Diorissimo can only be appreciated much the same way as putting your nose to Lily of the Valley or Lilac in bloom in May, and having the desire to hold this experience a bit closer and longer around you. It starts dewy and green with the Muguet fading into view and Lilac soon to follow. It reminds me of visits to um, Acton Arboretum in Acton, Massachusetts, not far from where I live, where the lily of the valley grows underneath the lilac bushes and the two uh, converge in their 
fragrances. Uh, there's a jasmine that serves as an undertone, just somewhat indolic, fleshing the florals out through the heart. It isn't until the very uh, last stages of the development that Diarissimo reveals more surreptitious animalic shades um, with echoes of the green and white florals lingering. So I have my tiny 90s bottle here. It's a 10 milliliter atomizer and I have it as a reference to wear for myself on my hands and my wrist. Um, it is a 90s version following the LVMH acquisition of Dior, yet Luca Turin does still give it four stars, stating today's Diorissimo is unquestionably different from the older version, although still a thing of great beauty. And it isn't even technically today's because there have been um, further reformulations since this. I opted for this version because from what I've learned, there can be a high risk uh, in springing for a vintage Viorissimo, uh, as the very components that make it beautiful are highly volatile, and vintages are often sadly diminished in their vitality and freshness. So having this little baby atomizer has helped me gain an even deeper appreciation for Edmund Rudnitska and inspires me to learn more about his life, pursuits, and inspirations. Viorissimo's impressionistic quality foreshadows subsequent classics of his, such as O Sauvage and Tiarella, and continue to inspire perfumers decades later. Predating Diorissimo by about 15 years is Mouguet de Bois from Coty. Um, this was originally re released in 1941. I have the Cologne Spray. This is the Cologne Pray Spray. I believe this is a 70s bottle, maybe early 80s bottle at the latest. Note the beautiful box as well. Um, on the back, it says Mouguet de Bois, a very special fragrance for a very special person because you like things lilting and light, because you like green things, spring flowers, and the feeling of soft spring breezes. Mouguet de Bois is just like that. And then there's an ellipsis. Gentle, delightly, delightfully fresh, and very romantic. So this smells as as fresh as Lily of the Valley itself, amazingly so considering its age. Um, in all honesty, yeah, it's so good. Um, the most natural representation of the flower is here, full stop. I have uh, much experience with the flower, um, given my experience, as I mentioned earlier, and um, you know the wateriness, the crispness, the treading the line between fresh and heady. Um, they would bloom under a pear tree every spring and uh, in my backyard uh, just after the jonquils would recede and I would just sneak a little to just smell them and marvel. I'd pick a couple uh, very sneakily because I wouldn't want my mother to know that I was picking her lily of the valley. <laughs> the development of Mouguet de Bois is much like that of the fresh flower from the time you pluck them to the very less ga last gasps from the withered bells, musky, green, slightly sour, but still very beautiful in that wilting stage. Assuming that this formulation is at least similar to the one in 1941, uh, albeit a cologne concentration, uh, it isn't any wonder that Rudnitska was so inspired to endeavor his own interpretation through Diorissimo. Um, the perfumer for Coté, uh, Mouguet de Bois, uh, is the legendary Henri Robert, who is also responsible for Chanel Pomonsieur, uh, Number 19, and Cristal. And that comes as absolutely no surprise as the origins of his mastery for crystalline verdure are evident in this one. So I'm happy to have yet another piece of history in the collection. And uh, the bonus is that it's a delight to wear as well. So that's Coty Mouguet de Bois. Next is a much more recent release from Parfums, Ducita Cavatina. This is from 2021. And it is a treatise for Lily of the Valley and how it is this ultimate floral blender, congregating other white flowers here with a jasmine and a tuberose with the Lily of the Valley as the lead. It allows the other two their own voice, but they serve more to elevate our star, the Lily of the Valley. We also have proof here that modern develops in scent chemistry have enabled the beloved Mouguet Accord to still thrive. 
and the restrictions to hydroxycitronellol and the banning of Lilio surely are not the nail in the coffin. It is magnificently rendered here, and there's no rough edges at all. Fresh, fleshy, saturated, um, with this rose coming through in the heart to extend the un and uh, also to underline the beauty of the Lily of the Valley. I would also argue that much like Hermes Muguet Porcelain, this is a decidedly unisex Lily of the Valley centered fragrance because there's a sparkling bergamot at the top and a musky, smoothly woody dry down, and that gives it a bit more of a masculine quality, albeit not butch by any means. Um, it is the perfect example of perfume transcending gender, and I feel the whole experience leans introspective and bittersweet. It would appeal to those who would value their time with the ephemeral flowers of spring. Cavatina. And last uh, but not least is one from the 90s. This is 1993's Parfum Det, or Summer Perfume, uh, from Kenzo. This is the original version. There was another version in 2002. Um, and this just evokes uh, the smell of an ever-warming spring. May is fast approaching, and soon the ground cover will include that of Lily of the Valley in bloom, but also that of the less celebrated but beautiful smelling Canada Mayflower. Not many people know this flower or, from, or are familiar with it, and if they do run into it, they, they don't know anything about it. But uh, this flower, which the Latin name is Mayanthemum canadense, has an aroma reminiscent of laundry taken in fresh from the line, but it's slightly imbued with these light indoles. And also in May, there blooms the star flower, uh, its um, Latin name is Lysimachia borealis, and they grow on the woodland floor in May. And it, they don't have very much of a fragrance of their own, but uh, it would make for a great spring floral fantasy note for their beauty and adjacency to the other flowers mentioned. Um, so this smells to me like all three flowers together, quite watery and crisp and brisk. I also smell a peony accord, smelling fresh, plump, and on the verge of overripe with these rosy overtones. Truthfully, it's one of the best peony representations I've encountered thus far. Um, I'm not sure if I'll be able to do a peony video because I don't have a, very many fragrances that feature it as, a, as an accord or note. Um, but I do want to give uh, a shout out <laughs> to the peony that's in this because it's impressive. I can almost envision the industrious little ants scurrying around the peony blooms, taking part in the mutualism between the two organisms. Um, the peony provides and the ants protect. Parfum Debt is really a, a garden taking us from the height of spring into summertime, hinting at the humidity, the dew, and the fecundity of the season. And then there is this languid quality that persists through the dry down, the lily of the valley carrying all the other flowers like a chaperone into an ever-growing heat and restlessness of the approaching summer. As they begin to wither, they pass their rain to ever fleshier, leafier, abundant woods, fading into moss, roots, woods, and undergrowth, swallowing all until next year, growing ever more humid and sensuous. Moments of the dry down are reminiscent of honey and beeswax scented soap. So sadly, this version was replaced about 20 years later with a different one, which while nice, has nowhere the same impact as the original. Um, so it's becoming more scarce as time goes on, um, but it is surely um, a unique beauty. So there you have it. There, those are the five fragrances in my collection that highlight Lily of the Valley. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please don't hesitate to subscribe, like, and hit the bell button for more notifications. And I hope to see you again soon. Take care.